طيب مساء الخير جميعا زملائنا وطلابنا الكرام ان شاء الله تكون اموركم تمام بالظروف هاي الصعبه كنت بتمنى اكون شايفكم اكثر بس يعني الظروف الحاليه بتحتم نعطي المحاضره اونلاين اول شيء بدي اشكر جادز جادز اي لاف جادز اتس ان اميزنج اورجنايزيشن اتس اندبندنت و run totally by students without the influence of anyone. أنا للي ما بيعرفوني اسمي أحمد معيطة. أنا أمانيندو دونتست أستاذ مساعد ورئيس قسم الكونز في الجامعة الأردنية. topic لليوم شوية dry يعني بعرف الناس بتفضل تشوف صور فينيز والكلينيكال كيسز أكثر من الحكي الساينتفك. بس اولا الموضوع انطرح من ربا بجاز اللي هي سيز اورجنايزنج ذا سيمينار وانا بشوف انه في حاجه ملحه له لانه طلابنا يعني عندهم شويه ضعف بكيف يقراوا الارتكل كيف يعرفوا الارتكل كويس من مش كويس ف I'll try to make this as uh, straightforward and simple as possible um, يعني تحملوني شوي راح يكون في حكي اكثر انا أول شيء بدي أطلب من الجميع إذا في مجال تتفرجوا من اللابتوب بدل التليفون ممكن يكون أوضح شوي لأن الصبح جربت في سلايدز على التليفون مش رح تطلع واضحة. فـ لابتوب وأسئلة ممكن نخليها للأخير أنا أم هابي تو أنسر أني كويستشنز بس أنا هلا شايف شاشة قدامي بس البرزنتيشن تبعتي مش شايف أي انتر أكشن. فنبدا طبعا الناس المعنيين بهذا التوبك او هاي الويبينار هم الستودنتس والفريش جرادز يعني ناس مش الاكسبرتس فاف يو ار ان اكسبرت وكثير عندك خبره بموضوع الريسيرش وهاو تو ريد بيبرز بليز اكسكيوز ذا بيزك ليفل فور ذس ويبينار سو احنا حطينا بالاد للويبينار 3 major questions that we need to answer how to read an article which articles are worth reading and how to stay up to date with the literature بس i came up with 13 different answer, 13 different questions that we'll try to answer in order to answer these three essential questions um, اللي بدي احكي انه this uh, presentation took some effort ما كانت سهلة وهذا الحكي مش موجود بارتكل وملخص uh, It's a summary of uh, كثير أشياء يعني articles و experience و I hope you find it useful منشوف بالأخير طيب So to me there's an evolution of a reader الواحد لما يبلش يقرأ بمر ب stages uh, أولهم هي ال novice reader novice reader يعني واحد جديد لسه Uh, student او متخرج جديد ما بيعرف يميز بين الارتكلز في فيديو هلا بيضحك شوي على تيك توك وحده بتحكي uh, انا اي شيء يحطوه قدامي اكله اللي هو مثل واقع الحال هالايام النوفيس ريدر اي شيء تحطه قدامه بقراه ارتكل مفيد مش مفيد ساينتفك uh, بقراه ما بيعرف يميز بينه لو ويز تايم اند شويه اديكيشن يو ديفلوب ذا سكيل تو Criticize a paper or do critical appraisal. Critical appraisal, يعني مش بس نقرأ the article passively. لا, إحنا الهدف إنه نطلع the article هاي وننتقدها. نطلع الأشياء الكويسة والأشياء الضعيفة اللي فيها واللimitations. With time, تنتقل للمرحلة اللي بعدها اللي هي to write your own manuscript. يعني مش بس to write your own manuscript and to get it published. هاي هي ستيج الثالثة من الإيفولوشن. بعدين with time and experience you become a reviewer. بصيروا الجورنالز يحكوا معاك و invite you to review their own papers. عشان احنا بنعرف إنه أي أرتكل تنتشر لازم تمر على reviewer ينتقدها يشوف إذا هي كويسة أو مش كويسة. فـ this to me is the evolution of a reader. احنا زي ما حكينا محاضرة اليوم 
معنيه بالنوفس ريدر تعطي شويه هنت كيف يصير يقرا احسن و maybe to introduce you to uh, critical appraisal it's by no means to teach you everything about critical appraisal it's by no means to teach you how to write a manuscript or become a reviewer okay so start with the first question what are your sources of information انا عندنا بالجامعه راح اعطي امثله كثير من الجامعه في عندنا competencies فجزء من ال competency في theoretical knowledge بسال الطالب سؤال بعدين بحكي له من وين جبت معلومتك فاحذروا ايش الجواب الاول بكون sheets uh, this is a terrible terrible source of information terrible no matter how good the lecturer is the lecturer هذا عم تتسجل محاضرته بالتليفون على الاغلب فهو most of the time اصلا المحاضره مش كثير عظيمه الصوت التسجيل مش كثير واضح والطالب اللي عم بيحاول يكتب المحاضره مش فاهم شيء فالمعلومه اللي بتوصل للطلاب بتكون معلومه كثير ناقصه وغير عن الشيء اللي intended to reach some people go to slide share حتى بيطلعوا سلايد من ناس منزله محاضراتها او سلايدز تبعونهم اونلاين اجين نو ما تو هاو جود ذا سلايدز ار The, the information are very basic and tips, يعني hints فيها, ما فيها detailed information. Uh, textbooks are another source of good information, especially for the first time. If you're reading about something for the first time, you probably need a textbook. Textbook uh, في good flow of ideas, بيعلمك كثير أشياء. Um, فإذا أنت أول مرة بتقرأ عن موضوع, I prefer that you read from textbooks. بعدين عنا Google. هلا انتو يور جنريشن ذات بلست وذ ذا انترنت احنا لما كنا بالجامعه لسه يعني كانت هاي الشغله باولها ما كان عندنا الفاسيلتيز اللي موجوده هلا انا بتذكر ماي فيرست اكسبيرينس مع جوجل كانت عن طريق دكتوره سمر برقان الله يسهل عليها لما دلتنا كيف نطلع الصور بسيمينار الاورال ميديسن اني واي جوجل از جود بس يو كان فايند اني ثينج اون جوجل هلا أنا بقدر أكتب مقالة عن الطاقة الشمسية ومشاكلها وأحطها و if someone looks it up on Google أو someone looks something about solar energy رح يلاقي الأرتكل تبعتي مع إنه هاي it's not scientific وأنا I'm not in a position to write about it بس uh, you can find it ف information on Google um, is, not, uh, is not reliable social media Facebook, Instagram هدول كثير ناس بحبوهم بيلاقوهم طريقة تعليم سهلة وهلا مور ريسنتلي تيك توك كمان دانتس صاروا يطلعوا على اغنية او شيء بيأشر يس ونو وعلى اجوبة على الاسنان فاين ذس اي فاين ذس فيري فيري ديسكريسفول صراحة وذا فاينل سورس اوف انفورميشن از ساينتفيك ارتيكلز ارتيكلز ار ا جود سورس اوف انفورميشن بيكوز They're quicker to read than a textbook. They're more up to date, and most good articles have been reviewed, strictly reviewed by experts in the field. So they are a better source of information than أشياء تانية هاي كلها. Okay. So why would I read an article? As I mentioned, to stay up to date with the with the knowledge in a particular field. Um, If you want to find a solution for a specific problem or read about etiology, pathophysiology of a disease, هلا احنا عندنا good example corona. You go on Google and you find anything. أي واحد بيبدي رأيه عن الموضوع بس you should really read scientific articles about it. If you want to carry uh, to carry out a research project, then um, you need to read articles because the articles would tell you what's been done and would Uh, tell you the gaps in knowledge that you can kick off your research from. Um, simply, if you're a student and your tutor gave you an article to read, then that's another reason to read an article. How if you have a view and you find you want to find support for it, so you go and read some articles and gather some evidence for it. Now, um, I like this sentence. Ma baf minu hada lhkaha, but we are being overloaded with information. Uh, but the knowledge is poor. Uh, we need to filter this huge amount of information that we receive every day through everything that we go through and improve our knowledge because having more information doesn't mean having uh, better knowledge. 
So, uh, for example, on PubMed, we're going to talk PubMed by the way. There's over 30 million citations. Um, in 2012, more than 30,000 randomized clinical trials were published. Min home, how 1,500 dental trials. Uh, in 1995, this article was published in British Medical Journal, and they estimated that if a physician or um, general practitioner needs to read on average 17 articles every day, seven days a week, 12 months a year, in order to contain the number of articles that's being published. Had al-haki in 1995, you can imagine the numbers are probably doubled or tripled now. Fa, this doesn't make sense. So, how can we uh, keep up, up to date? How can we uh, stay on top of the game? We either become an Einstein or Muhammad Rababa. Um, so, Muhammad Rababa is a Mismana, Masik Bil Khair, Abu Abdullah. Mashallah, Ali, Dr. Muhammad, Kulmurra, Bakra article, Deed, Bakun Halla Tala, Bobsota Hali, Nikar, Obarafo, Bakim, and Dr. Muhammad. مش بس بكون عارفه وبيعطيني كمان 30 ارتكل ثاني بيحكوا اما زيه او ضده فما شاء الله عليه بس احنا ما بنحكي عن اينشتاين او محمد رباب بنحكي عن ناس طبيعيين اللي زينا كيف ممكن تو ستي اون توب اوف ذا جيم بدنا نعرف اول شيء شو هم التايبس اوف ارتكلز رفلي ذا ليتشر از ديفايدد انتو برايمري اند سكندري برايمري ليتشر يعني هدول الارتكلز ذات جيف اس نيو انفورميشن مهم ام اكسبيرمنتس او ترايلز نعملوا واعطونا ان نيو بيس اوف انفورميشن اكزامبلز ار راندومايز كنترول ترايلز كوهورت ستاديز اللي هم موستلي بروسبكتيف ستاديز بس ما كان الانترفنشن كنترول فيهم الكيس كنترول ستاديز ار ريتروسبكتيف ستاديز يعني ستادي سامبلز ذات هاف بين اكسبوزد تو سمثينج and they uh, have already been exposed. We're going to go back to the past and we're going to find factors that affected the outcome. Uh, observational studies, like the epidemiological studies, all of them, well, uh, survey studies. Then we have the in vitro studies, these are experiments that we're doing in the lab. We have case reports and case series. I mean, I have a patient who did this, I'm going to show this paper as a case report. Uh, case series, I mean, more than a few of بنشرهم بس يسمون كيس سيريز. هلا السكندري ليترتشر يعني هذا الليترتشر اللي اخذ البرايمري ليترتشر اطلع عليه فلتره وعمل منه شيء اقوى شوي المفروض. آه زي الريفيوز اللي هم اما سيستماتيك او ناراتيف الفرق بين السيستماتيك ريفيو والناراتيف ريفيو. ناراتيف ريفيو از سمبلي ان ابديت اون ا سيرتن توبيك. سو اتس ا برود توبيك بيجي واحد بيعطي عنه ابديت ريفيرينج تو سيرتن ارتيكلز اللي بين ببلش ان ذا باست. ا سيستماتيك ريفيو از اون ا ناروور توبيك بنلاقي شغله محدده بدنا نعرف عنها كل شيء ففي ستريكت ميثود اوف سيرشينج بنطلع كل ارتيكل انحكت عن هذا الموضوع و و تو ريبورت اون ات ف سيستماتيك ريفيوز ريكواير يعني more rigorous procedure research. Hala, if you take the data from a systematic review, وبتحطها مع بعض كلها وترجع تعمل عليها statistical analysis مرة تانية, تعمل لها إشي اسمه meta analysis. فإحنا منزيد the power of the study لما إحنا ندخل samples أكتر, يزيد the sample size تبعنا, بصير عنا meta analysis, but this is considered the highest level of evidence. طبعا في عنا book reviews و the clinical guidelines اللي هم usually if you follow certain um, Authority bodies like Anna Mathalan, for example, I follow the American Association of Endodontists, the European Society of Endodontology. Hadola kul fatra fatra bitalaru guidelines ala certain practice, for example, antibiotic prescription. So hadola guidelines bikunu based on randomized controlled trials or systematic reviews. These are two examples of reviews. The one on the right hand side is a narrative review. You can see it's a broad topic, update. On endodontic irrigating solutions. Had uh, two prominent people who just gave us an update on a broad topic. A systematic review, it's a, a specific question. Association between chronic periodontal disease and obesity. Full stop. Had a search method, 
رح نحكي عنهم بعد شوي والجواب بكون specific to that that question only. This takes us to the concept of evidence-based dentistry. كل حدا بيحكي عن evidence-based dentistry بس uh, uh, most people have misconceptions about it. Evidence-based dentistry مش معناته أنا أحكي evidence عن كل شيء بحكيه. Uh, في سؤال بيضحك أنا بلجان البورد للمجلس الطبي الأردني ففي سؤال بواحد من تخصصات إجا بسنة من السنين uh, Which of the following articles was not published? إنه honestly this is a joke because this evidence-based dentistry doesn't mean that I should know every single article that's been published عشان أعرف الارتكل اللي ما نعمل publication uh, ولا إنه أجيب لواحد سؤال إنه الارتكل الفلانية انتشرت سنة 95 ولا 96 ولا 97 This doesn't make sense This is not evidence-based dentistry uh, The term evidence-based medicine was first used in 1991 So this is relatively new يعني بنحكي عن 30 سنة بس uh, Evidence-based dentistry came a few years afterwards وفي إلها an official definition by the American Dental Association It's an approach to oral health care that requires judicious integration of systematic assessments of clinically relevant scientific evidence relating to the patient's oral and medical condition and history with the dentist's clinical expert expertise and the patient's treatment needs and preferences. يعني إحنا, it's in the integration of three things, the best current evidence, your clinical expertise, and the patient's needs and preferences. Uh, the evidence can range from observation of one single patient to multi-center and multinational clinical studies. So anything counts as evidence, but في, في hierarchy of evidence, في levels. I assume most of you would know this. At the very tip of the pyramid are systematic reviews, meta-analysis, and clinical guidelines. Hadola, they give us the best kind of evidence that we have. بيجي تحتيهم randomized controlled trials لأنه إحنا في عنا a certain group of patients of interest نعمل intervention ومنشوف بعدين with time شو بصير cohort studies حكينا mostly prospective studies برضو uh, they are considered an okay evidence case controls are retrospective إحنا منتفرج على الناس اللي صار عندهم cancer uh, بعدين نطلع نطلع على الريكوردز تبعونه ونصير نحاول نلاقي ايش الاشياء اللي ممكن عملت لهم هذا الكانسر زي انهم كانوا بيدخنوا او بيشربوا مي من مكان معين او او او. الكي سيريز كيس ريبورتس ار كونسيدرد باد ايفيدنس اند ذا لوست ليفل اوف ايفيدنس از ذا اديتوريز اند اكسبرت اوبينيونز يعني اللي على الفيسبوك بيحكي لك معلومه انه ما تستعمل هذا الدواء او هاي التريتمنت اي دونت ونت جو انتو بيرسونال ثينجز اي تراي نوت تو كوت اني ون اور اني ثينج بس هذول كلهم اكسبرت اوبينيونز حتى كلمه اكسبرت اي هاف ريزرفيشن اون ات هم هذول اوبينيونز اوكي يور اوبينيون از ا فيري باد ايفيدنس دونت تراي تو انفلونس اون بيبل انليس يو ريلي ريلي ان ا بوزيشن تو انفلونس يور اوبينيون هلا اللي بدي احكيه انه هذول الهايراركي اوف ايفيدنس اتس ريليتيف مش يعني انه كل randomized control trial is a better evidence than a cohort study. مرات بكون عندنا cohort study بس فيها massive number of patients and the follow-up was for a long period of time. This can give me a better evidence than a randomized control trial with a very short time of follow-up and very small sample. Okay, so it's relative. So, evidence dentistry is good. Evidence-based practice is good. But sometimes we don't have the evidence يعني كثير ناس بيسألوا أسئلة مرات شو الأفيدنس؟ I'll take you to this interesting study. Um, this is published in 2003 in British Medical Journal, one of top journals in the world. Uh, and then what they wanted to do is to study the influence of wearing a parachute while jumping off a plane and see whether this actually prevents death or major trauma. So the study design was a randomized, uh, sorry, systematic review. They wanted to review all the randomized controlled trials that were made to address this issue. And they searched Medline, Web of Science, Embase, and Cochrane Library. Um, and the outcome they were looking for is death or major trauma. The results, guess what? They found zero randomized controlled trials. Of course, no one's gonna jump off a plane without a parachute. So, their bottom line was that those advocates of evidence-based medicine 
who have criticized the adoption of interventions evaluated by uh, using only observational data. Maybe they should uh, themselves uh, organize and participate in double-blind randomized placebo controlled crossover trials of parachute. يعني دعوهم للناس اللي اللي uh, the advocates of evidence-based medicine إنه هم يعملوا هاي الاستدي نفسه لأنه ما في there's no such an evidence ف there's no such an evidence لا يعني إنه أنا أروح أنط من الطيارة بدون parachute لأنه ما في evidence إنه إذا بستعمل parachute أنا راح أعيش so I'll take this and apply it to endo كثير من الارتكلز راح نناقشهم اليوم related to endo because this is my uh, comfort zone Apologies if this is boring you, but I'll try to make it relevant. So, is there evidence for using rubber dam? Is there evidence that using rubber dam improves the success rate of root canal treatment? We don't have good evidence. This article is probably our best evidence, published in 2014. So, what is it? Um, a retrospective study. B. Taiwan. Shafu al medical records. مش عارف كم مريض. ملايين وطلعوا منهم مين اللي نعملهم روت كانال اندر روبر داون مين اللي ما نعملهم and guess what they only talked about survival and survival with rubber dam was 90.3% without rubber dam 88.8 almost similar but because they used a very very large sample they had significant difference so what kind of evidence is this it's terrible look at uh, this Cochrane uh, uh, review. Cochrane is, I don't to talk about Cochrane. Uh, هي, Cochrane Library has a systematic reviews and meta-analysis that uh, they a very speci specialized team. It's usually considered the best type of evidence, the highest level, because it's uh, been done under very strict conditions by expert people. So if there is a Cochrane review with a positive recommendation, this is considered a very, very high evidence. So, uh, this one on the irrigants in endodontics. So, they uh, studied randomized control trials uh, uh, that would uh, in investigate the influence of using sodium hypochlorite or chlorhexidine as uh, irrigant during root canal treatment. Their main results, there is no difference between sodium hypochlorite, chlorhexidine, and normal saline. So uh, there's currently insufficient reliable evidence showing the superiority of any one individual irrigant. And as usual, they ask for more trials. Now, does this mean that we should use normal saline? No. Uh, I'll come to talk about this in, in more detail later, but endodontics in particular, the outcome of root canal treatment doesn't depend on one factor. Uh, there are multiple factors involved. Using one irrigant versus another doesn't necessarily control the other factors. Uh, so it's it's very difficult to arrange a randomized controlled trial, design one randomized controlled trial that would address the effect of using one type of saline over the other or one type of solution over the other. Um, that's why our evidence doesn't come from randomized controlled trial. And if we rely on Cochrane reviews, we won't find evidence. article. We need to know uh, what are the main sections of an article. So most articles follow the IMRAD uh, pattern, uh, except for narrative reviews and case reports. So start uh, with the title. Title, you can find it uh, at the very top. It gives you an information about the topic and some information about the authors. So and I will see uh, the title, مين هم the authors, is بنزل تحت على footnotes, بحكي لي عن هدول ال authors, مين هم من وين. طبعا ال journal, لازم أعرف شو هي. Uh, then there's an abstract. Abstract is a brief summary of what the article is. It tells you very quickly what they did, why, and what the results were. Uh, most journals would give you the abstract for free. هلا أغلب ال journals لازم تدفع مصاري عشان تقرأ the full text articles. But abstracts are available for free. Uh, they're easy to read, mainly because uh, most journals have word limit for the abstract. Barfel Journal of Endodontics asks you to write no more than 200 words. In 200 words, you'd read 
the summary of what this article is about. It's very convenient to read. Uh, but then we go to the introduction. Introduction gives you some background information. إيش هي background تبع هذا الموضوع اللي نحكي عنه؟ وزي ما بتعطينا الأشياء اللي بنعرفها بتحكي لنا الأشياء اللي ما بنعرفها عن هذا التوبك هذول بنسميهم ال gaps in the knowledge. Uh, بآخر ال introduction في عنا ال aims and the objective وال hypotheses of this research question. بعد introduction عنا ال materials and methods أو ال methodology أو some journals call it the methods. Call it whatever you want. It's the recipe for this uh, study. Technical details. How this experiment was done. كيف نعملت؟ شو سوينا فيها؟ كل المعلومات هاي. So it gives you information about the number of subjects, uh, categorization, sampling methods, inclusion, exclusion criteria, the outcome that we measured, and the statistical analysis. This is the most important section of any paper. هلا رح نحكي عنهم شوية بعدين. بس أنا to me the methodology part is what I read in detail. أكثر جزء بركز عليه بالارتكيل. بعدين في عنا الريزلتس بعد ما هذا حكى لنا الارتكيل الباكراوند انفورميشن حكى لنا كيف عمل الاستدي هلا بيحكي لنا الريزلتس فالريزلتس ممكن تكون مكتوبة as text, figures, tables or graphs وبدنا نميز بين statistical significance وال clinical significance مش شرط كل اشي يكون statistically significant يكون له clinical significance يعني بتذكر قرأت ارتكيل على influence of certain uh, intervention bad extraction of third molar teeth. Uh, for they measured the amount of swelling after extraction. For one intervention, I don't want to quote something I'm not sure about. But uh, the amount of swelling was less by two millimeters, the one intervention. Uh, and they did statistical significance, a statistical examination, and the difference was significant. What does that mean? إذا أنا في عندي intervention راح يقول لي لي swelling بدل ما كان 10 ملم صار 8 ملم that doesn't have any clinical significance I still had swelling so we need to uh, differentiate between statistical and clinical significance now uh, the last section is discussion in discussion um, they try to provide rationale for the results إيش هدول الresults معناتهم compare those results to previously reported uh, results in the literature. Then they discuss the strength and limitations of the study and then provide suggestions for future research. These are mainly the things that are written in the discussion. Now, make sure uh, you know that the interpretations of the results are the opinions of the authors. They're not necessarily facts. Okay, so there's a leeway here to express your opinion. But then, after if you have references, who will bibliography? that we used um, to write this abstract, okay? So how do we read an article? Um, a novice article, a, a novice reader would grab an article and start reading from top to bottom, uh, not knowing how to skip uh, through domains and sections. So Anna, again, this is my answer to how to read an article. I didn't uh, get it from a specific, uh, article or published information. It's my answer. It's up to you whether you want to take it or not. So I, I would start by reading the title. If the title is, is relevant to me and it's uh, of interest, then I may read the article. If the title is not, then I would just skip it. And then after the title, I'd scan the journal and the authors. Hi, Yani. I do it because the type of journal is important. There are some good journals. You'll get to know these with time and experience. But there are some predatory journals. Hadola binshurulak ay ishiz falhum masari. Fa usually an article that's published in a predatory journal um, is not really a good one. The authors, if I see an article, for Van Meerbeek, uh, national article on bonding, I would read it straight away. I don't care. He's one prominent uh, author. Um, a figure in the bonding, so I would read his article. Hello. If you're okay with the with the journal, the authors, the title, you read the abstract. It takes you a few minutes to have a quick idea of what the article is about, and then from the abstract you determine the research question. Shu an bihawal article Then you go to the methodology section. 
anatomy, this is the most important part. This is the do or die. Uh, so you look at the methodology that they used. examples. I'm going to discuss a few examples. Uh, discuss the methodology. Is the, is the methodology that they used capable of addressing the research question? If not, then don't read the article. It's not worth it. Uh, and then I'd go to the results, read them. Are they clear? Did they actually, are these results capable of answering the research question? And then I read the conclusion. Is the conclusion justifiable and supported by the results? يعني, مثال سريع. أنا عملت مقارنة بين سنة رابعة عندي وسنة خامسة. مين أسرع؟ طلعوا عندي سنة رابعة بركضوا أسرع كثير من سنة خامسة. فلما باجي بكتب الارتكل تبعتي ما بصير أعمل conclusion إنه طلاب رابعة طلعوا أسرع طلاب بالبلد. لأني أنا ما بعرف عن بقية الطلاب. بس الconclusion تبعتي إنه طلاب رابعة أسرع من طلاب خامسة. full stop. ف don't exaggerate. أنت يعني we need to develop this ability to uh, criticize the conclusions that are written. And if you're happy with all these, read the whole paper. Start from scratch. Start from the introduction and go through everything in sequence. It will make more sense. Uh, I made this uh, chart. And I'm into, يعني, it's very primitive, but uh, I hope it helps. So start with the title. If it's relevant and interesting, if the answer is no, dismiss the article. Don't read it. If yes, Go to the abstract. Do you can you see a clear research question? No, don't read it. Yes. Go to the methodology. Are the methodology reliable, reproducible, capable of addressing the research question? If no, no no point of reading the article. This is not a good article. If you're happy with the methodology, go to the results. Are they clear and valid? If yes, we go to the conclusion. Justifiable. Reflect the results, yani supported by the results that uh, uh, been achieved. Then this is a good article; and it's worth reading. Taban, we still need to read the discussion parts and make sure that it it provides a good rationale for the results. If the answer to results and conclusion is no, then I would still read this article with reservation, maybe. So um, I hope this uh, chart is yani useful to many of you. Now, how to critically appraise a paper? This is a very uh, long and difficult uh, question to answer. Uh, by no means, I'm trying to teach you how to critically appraise a paper. I'm probably just giving you a, a flavor of how to do this. Uh, to critically appraise a paper is to criticize it. We look at the paper, not just passively. We talk about this paper, it has these things that are good, but it has this wrong, this wrong, this wrong, this wrong. Um, so let's start with the clinical trials. The clinical trials are uh, made on a PICO uh, basis. PICO P starts for patients or population. So if we have um, a specific group of patients that satisfy our needs, nas مثلاً المدخنين. أنا بدي أعمل study على المدخنين. فهدول ال patients I uh, randomize them into two groups, or more than two groups in certain studies. But uh, one of the groups is the intervention. The other one is the control. Intervention هو الإشي اللي أنا بدي أعمله. بدي أشوف مثلاً تأثير uh, مش عارف ال patches على ترك الدخان. فبتكون uh, ال intervention تبعتي هو new patches اللي أنا عم بجربهم. The control تبعي هو إما بكون في gold standard بال بالفيلد هاد زي مثلا مش عارف بالحالة التدخين ما في يمكن في ال advice أو a placebo يعني بعملهم patches بلزقوا نفس الإشي بس ما فيهم أي active ingredient هذا اسمه placebo زي لما بعطي واحد بدي أقارن ال ال effect تبع ال ال analgesia ل new medication بعطيه medication ب one group ال group الثانية placebo بس بعطيه حبة دواء ما فيها ولا إشي طب شورة بشربها وبتطلع في عندي patients randomly divided into two groups or more and then I follow this up in time and I measure the outcome after some time. So this is a PICO, P-I-C-O. Uh, and then I compare the outcome between the two groups and see if this is any different. So random allocation is very important because otherwise there will be a source of bias. يعني أنا المرضى هدول لازم أحطهم بين الجروب بطريقة 
absolutely random. If there's no randomization, معناته أنا عم بوزعهم على كيفي. معناته أنا am biased. معناته results تبوني biased. So um, blinding is important. يعني إذا أنا a clinician عم بعمل ال intervention, I shouldn't know what inform what a uh, uh, procedure I'm doing. يعني نرجع على موضوع ال analgesia. I'm trying a new medication and I'm comparing it to a placebo. لما بعطيه لمريض متوجع عنده headache, chronic headache. أنا ك ك clinician مش لازم أعرف شو الميديكيشن اللي أعطيته المريض مش لازم يعرف شو الميديكيشن اللي أخده ولما أجي أعمل assessment بعدين مش لازم أكون عارف شو الintervention اللي نعملت that is called double blinding يعني ال ال the one who did the procedure the one who did the assessment are blinded so the more accurate term for a good study is randomized controlled double blinded clinical trials so randomization في control group في double blinding and it's a clinical trial Sample size is important. What's the sample size that they used? Uh, Follow-up time. Is an analgesia effect. It's enough to follow up uh, for one week, for example, or three days. If I'm studying the uh, outcome of hip replacement, for example, uh, then I need 10 plus years. There's no point of, uh, um, of doing uh, hip replacement if they're not going to last for two to three years. It's a very uh, morbid procedure. Recall rate. I started with 100 patients. When I was waiting for them for a year, I got 30 patients. This is not a good recall rate. Risk of bias. Who is doing this study? Who is doing this study on the new analgesic? It's a company of the drugs that chose the drug. Or is it independent? Uh, will outcome assessed? Does it interest me? Can I apply these results to my patients? Uh, Helen medical journals agree on a certain method of reporting clinical trials. This is the consort. Consort stands for Consolidated Standards for Reporting Trials. Hadola, in every section, there are things that you need to tick in order for the clinical trials to be reported. In a, in a good manner. Okay, هاي هم هدول كاملين الكونسورت. فأنا uh, اللي قرأ ال articles اللي بعتهم. I chose three articles that were published recently. Uh, وخلينا نشوف if we can criticize them. نقرأ نه نشوف هدول ال articles كويسين ولا مش كويسين. شو الأشياء اللي كويسة فيهم شو الأشياء اللي مش كويسة فيهم. فا uh, these two articles أول واحدة هون. Um, outcome of root canal treatments using new calcium silicate root canal sealer in unrandomized clinical trial. When I read the article, definitely interests me. Um, interesting. The journal is Journal of Clinical Medicine, one of the top journals. Very good one. Talal authors, Hadola, Yani Foski, or Francesco Manucci. They are the guys at King's College London. Francesco Manucci is the uh, head of endo department at King's College London. It's published in March 2020, so uh, so far I'm happy with this article. I want to read it. The second one is effect of pulpotomy procedures with mineral trioxide aggregate and dexamethasone on post-endodontic pain in patients with irreversible pulpitis, a randomized control trial. Again, the title is interesting to me. Unfortunately, I don't know any of the authors. It's published in European Endodontic Journal. No idea what that journal is. Uh, not a good one for sure. Uh, it's, it's been published in 2019. So by the looks of them, this looks more appealing to me than the second one. Let's see. Uh, we'll find them. Uh, we'll find it difficult. Uh, we'll find it sorry easier to follow now. But I'll try to quickly explain what they did. So article Ula. Their objective was to compare the success rate of two groups of obturations. One day they used calcium silicate sealer, which is bio root, in a single cone technique. Hello, we know that single cone technique is a debatable technique. The group of two is to use resin sealer in warm vertical condensation. So I'm do preoperatively. I'm do periapical radiographs and cone beam CT scans. So I saw 150 teeth that fulfilled their inclusion criteria. What inclusion criteria? Restorable teeth diagnosed irreversible pulpitis or necrotic pulp. Yani basically any restorable tooth that needed root canal treatment. Exclusion criteria, apical resorption that would make uh, 
روتري انسترومنتيشن ديفيكولت هذول الاشياء سو uh, so, uh, من ال 150 uh, سن اللي هم ذات فولفيلد انكلوجن كرايتيريا 25 تيث وير اكسكلودد تو اوف ذيم بيكوز ذا بيشنتس دينايد ذا كونسنت فورم يعني بعد ما عملوا الكونسنت فورم بطلوا و 23 تيث وير اكسكلودد بيكوز ذي وير ديمد انريستورابل افتر كومنسينج ذا تريتمنت ذن ذا روت كانت تريتمنتس وير بيرفورمد باي سبيشالستس اند سبيشالست ترينيز Can be standard protocol for the root canal treatment. Instrumentation started with manual files, but then they used protaper next to at least a size X2. Irrigation can end protocol, 2% sodium hypochlorite for 30 minutes. Bil akhir, they used 15% EDTA, and then a final rinse with sodium hypochlorite with ultrasonic agitation. Uh, then, obturation done with either technique, yeah, I'm a single cone, ma uh, calcium silicate sealer, or epoxy based resin. Um, uh, epoxy resin based sealer with a warm vertical condensation. I'm doing them composite, but then after one month, the full coverage restorations. After 12 months, they did clinical radiographic assessment. Clinical, yani they uh, investigated the presence of symptoms, tenderness, palpation, percussion, mobility, sinus tracts, kulhaynashia. Radiographic assessment, I'm doing per ap radiographs, comb beam CT scans. Uh, and this was done by two trained and experienced endodontists. The outcome that they measured, they defined success as functional asymptomatic teeth with absence or decreased size of periapical radiolucency. Yani snan li kanat asymptomatic functional will a radiolucency imma mush mawjude aw zigrat bil hajam. Failure imma non-functional aw symptomatic aw sar fi anna new legion aw legion hada ma tghayyar bil hajam. They considered it as failure. Results من ال 125 سن اللي عملوا لهم تريتمنت 104 كيم باك فور اسسمنت. This is uh, 83% recall rate which is good considered good. The success rate according to the cone beam CT was 84% in the calcium silicate and single cone technique group and 80% in the resin sealer or warm vertical condensation. According to the uh, periapical radiograph, the success was 90% in the calcium silicate group, 89% in the resin sealer. Now, we know uh, because the uh, cone beam CT is more capable of detecting pathology. If you have a pathology, it's very small. It's not penetration to the buccal or lingual bone plates. Uh, you cannot see that on a periapical radiograph. So, the success rate is higher. Because there is a pathology, but you don't see it in the periapical periapic radiograph. Cone beam CT is a more sensitive tool. So the success rate using this sensitive tool is lower. Okay. For amino statistical analysis, uh, and from the p-value, we can see that there was no differences in the success between the groups. And, and, and a marginal uh, improvement be a calcium silicate group, but the uh, uh, difference is not statistically significant. So their conclusions was, Within the limitations of this uh, trial, the calcium silicate, which is bio root, in combination with single cone, resulted in comparable success rate compared to that of warm vertical condensation and H plus sealer. Heck, the article tacky. Let's see what I see about the topic. I tried to do a critical appraisal for it. So, limitations. They did uh, um, a consort flow chart, which is okay. There's no registry. Uh, they, they didn't register their uh, uh, study with a clinical registry. Hala, fi short la aya clinical article in order to be published and had kun msajale bi wahad min clinical trial registers. Zay mathalan clinicaltrials.gov. Msajale protocol bi clinicaltrials.gov before we start the trial. And then we do it. And when we report on the results, we have to quote. In registration with the uh, registry. The reason uh, is A, عشان الناس ما تألف results. B, عشان نضمن إنه هاي study they uh, uh, stick to the protocol that they started with. إذا صار في تغيير بالprotocol, they have to explain it. مش أنا أعمل كل إشي بالأخير أجي أكتبها. يعني this is important. Anyway, هذا مش شيء كتير مهم هلا. Uh, exclusion criteria are not justifiable. يعني they excluded any cases of Uh, apical resorption, the rotary instrumentation inappropriate. 
I don't know, I'm not sure about this exclusion criterion, but I don't like it. No randomization done, this is what they said. It's probably because uh, of the large number of clinicians who performed the treatment. It was difficult to randomize. Follow-up was for one year. That's not enough, we know this. You need more than that to determine whether this root canal treatment is successful or not. Now, out of 150 teeth, 23 teeth were deemed non-restorable just after starting the treatment. And to me, this shows me that whoever made the decision is not a great dentist. Yani I accept one, two, three, four, five cases. I can say that the root canal is non-restorable. But we're talking about one-fifth. One-fifth of the cases could be the root canal treatment is non-restorable. This probably shows I'm not really a good clinician. Uh, the preoperative diagnosis is not mentioned. They only mentioned pulpitic or necrotic pulps. طيب, how about the size of the radiolucency? Um, we know that the size of the apical radiolucency is the prognosis. Um, is there a sinus? If there's a sinus tract, acute apical abscess, they were not mentioned. The only mention was for the pulp status. Um, uh, pulpitis or necrotic. They used cone beam CT preoperatively, which is frowned upon. Some people would go for that, but it's not 100% justifiable. But the problem is that cone beam CT one year after the treatment just to investigate the success of root canal treatment. This is totally unjustifiable. This is a disaster. Uh, now I understand why they didn't publish this paper in the Journal of Endodontics or International Endodontic Journal, because this would be my pick as an endodontist, that is an account until head the King's College London, this would be my pick. But Sadola probably ما سمحوا له على هذا الإشي ما وافقوا عليه. فاضطر يروح على جنرال ما له دخل بالدنتس اسمه كلينيكال ميديسن. Definition of success. هما they define success as any improvement in the radiolucency. This is not the definition of the success. إحنا في عنا a definition that agreed upon by the European Society of Endodontology. It's success or absence of clinical symptoms and a normal apical anatomy. اللي هو intact lamina dura, who uh, 0.2 to 0.3 millimeter periodontal ligament space. Anything other than that, it's not considered success. You can call it survival, but it's not success. What kind of improvement were you looking for? What was the threshold? Was like 0.1 millimeter improvement considered a success? So that's a bit dodgy. Uh, the clinicians who performed the treatment were specialists and trainees. Now, if I if I have a trainee in my clinic, I'm بدربو كيف يعمل root canals. I don't expect him or her to have the same success rate as mine because I've been doing this for a long period of time. My success rate should be higher than a trainee's success rate. So, again, that that's another bias that they did not account for. All treatments were performed over two visits. هذا الحكي إجا بالأخير بآخر الدسكشن حكوا إنه نعمله over two visits طب you did not mention intercontinent medication whether it was used or not temporization what did you use to temporize teeth so what's the verdict not so great I don't really like this paper let's have a look at the other one that initially we didn't like it because it was published in European Endodontic Journal so their objective was to compare the post-operative pain relief of dexamethasone and MTA after pulpotomy or permanent molars that were diagnosed with irreversible pulpitis. Okay. So it was a prospective double-blind clinical study on 54 patients diagnosed symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. Hadola inclusion criteria, single pain-filled restorable molar that uh, indicates uh, symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. Good. Hadol al exclusion criteria, Ktar. The standard pulpotomy procedure was local anesthesia, rubber dam, caries excavation, and then access cavity, coronal pulp tissue removal. Then they irrigated the pulp chamber with saline, and they used a dry cotton pellet to dry the pulp chamber. And then after that, they divided the patients into three groups. One group, they just put a dry cotton pellet. The second group, they put a cotton pellet soaked in diluted MTA solution. And the third group, they used a cotton pellet soaked with dexamethasone, eight milligram per two millimeters, per two milliliters. Yani, this is, uh, 
the pulpotomy procedure that we do for emergency procedure. The medical marid عنده emergency irreversible, sorry, irreversible pulpitis. We do an emergency access cavity or coronal pulp extirpation. We put a temporary filling. This is exactly what they did. Not the pulpotomy that we're talking about, which is as a permanent procedure, definite procedure. So after they did, uh, um, they um, divided the patients into three groups. They sealed the access cavity with cold to soon. And then they gave the patient forms to register their pain level on a visual analog scale from zero to 10, uh, every six hours for the first day and then daily for the next uh, seven days. And they gave the patients uh, analgesics every six hours, 400 milligram ibuprofen uh, four times, um, in the first 24 hours and then as needed. For those, pa those patients who couldn't take ibuprofen, they gave them 500 milligram uh, paracetamol. Then they did statistical analysis of the pain levels using the ANOVA test. Their results, 45 patients completed the follow-up uh, of the study. And the response rate was 83%. That's good. Patients treated with MTA, they, they showed the lowest level of pain at all time intervals. Is uh, This group is the dry cotton pellet. Pain is decreasing with time. But I'm al MTA group. You can compare that the pain uh, is significantly lower. And it's the significance started after 18 hours because of the p-value less than 0.05. Before that, there was no significant difference. But for all these, uh, there was statistically significant difference, and the post hoc test proved that it's the MTA group that showed the lowest level. Uh, this is uh, an illustration. This is the, the green is the MTA line. Pain dropped significantly. Uh, now, the dexamethasone group lowered the level of pain better than a dry cotton pellet, but there was no statistically significant difference. So their conclusions, Pulpotomy procedures can reduce pain related to irreversible pulpitis. Pulpotomy with MTA soaked cotton pellet significantly reduces pain intensity in patients with irreversible pulpitis. Let's how I criticized it. Limitations. They went for a consort flow chart. That's good. No registration. Explains why they chose this, uh, this journal. They said it's double-blinded. It's not. You cannot be double-blinded. The clinician who did the pulpotomy, زي ما بيحكوا, في حدا أعطاه cotton pellet, واحدة ناشفة, واحدة مغرقة ب MTA. إحنا بنعرف كيف شكل ال MTA حتى if it's a solution راح تبين شكلها عن قطنة. واحدة dexamethasone راح تكون قطنة مبلولة. ف unless إنه الدنتست عمل هيك وحط القطنة جوا ال pulp chamber, it's not blinded. هذا اللي عمل procedure. Lamel intervention. Dentist who did the, inter the assessment, there was no assessment. They gave uh, a form that the patients filled in and then they just read it out. So there was no assessment to be blinded. Randomization not explained. They just said they divided the patients into three groups. How did you divide them into three groups? Did you choose which patient goes into which group? Exclusion criteria. Analgesic use for more than one day. Honestly, studies that study the pain after a certain procedure would exclude those patients who have taken analgesics in the last 24 hours. It makes sense. I took analgesic in the last 24 hours, so I don't qualify to report on my pain level because my pain level could be affected by the analgesics that I already took. هدول عم بيحكوا اللي أخذ analgesics أكثر من يوم ما بدخل اللي أخذوا بس يوم بدخل يعني I think they don't understand the concept. Use of antibiotics. Okay, I, uh, although I agree that antibiotics are not indicated for irreversible pulpitis, but if I have a patient who took antibiotic, that's not going to affect the uh, pain threshold or pain experience. So I wouldn't exclude them. History of root canal therapy. Why? Someone who received root canal treatment 12 years ago. Why would I exclude them? Okay, tenderness to percussion, mashy, pulp necrosis. Active systemic disease, why? Someone who has a high blood pressure, why would I exclude them? Uh, periodontitis, okay, resorption, okay, mobility, mashi. Diffuse pulp chamber calcification, why? Why would I exclude that? Oh, no bleeding after access cavity preparation. 
Again, why? Someone who came to me with severe pain needing an emergency access cavity, and I diagnose it as symptomatic irreversible pulpitis. Does it matter if the pulp bleeds when I open it or not? Because the coronal pulp could be necrotic, radicular pulp could be still vital, partial necrosis somewhere. Again, uh, exclusion criteria do not make sense. Why did they not exclude patients with mental and psychological issues? Hadola mumkin yatuna exaggerated readings al pain. Uh, or females, for example. Lish ma'amluha bas al males. Okay, nukta. Uh, pulpotomy procedure was questionable. Yani. They did the access cavity and then they irrigated with normal saline. Honestly, this is not what we do. We use sodium hypochlorite. That's the gold standard. Uh, but then, نرجع شوي للبلبوتومي بروسيجر. إحنا when we say MTA pulpotomy, we want to place a base of MTA on the vital pulp stumps in order to seal and protect the pulp from any insult. وبعدين to use the bioactivity of MTA to induce heart tissue formation. This is the only use of MTA. هدول حطوا قطنة soaked in MTA solution على البلب chamber. بعدين هاي القطنة راح تنشال. وواحد يعمل روت كنال بعديها. I honestly don't understand what they're trying to do. They don't understand what MTA pulpotomy is. Time to stop the bleeding. Was it measured? It probably has an influence on the post-operative pain. They didn't do any correlation between the pre-operative and post-operative pain. Someone who came to me uh, uh, crying out for help because they couldn't sleep at night غير عن واحد اجى بيحكي لي والله عندي وجع بس اشرب مي بعد كثير بتوجع خلص مش قادر اتحمل اعمل لي روت كنال في فرق كثير كبير هذا الاولاني مش رح ما فيش عندي سحر يختفي الوجع تبعه immediately ف there should have been some sort of correlation between pre op and post op they gave the patient two different types of analgesics طب honestly يعني ممكن المرضى اللي اخذوا ابروفين بعد ست ساعات they reported lower pain uh, levels من اللي اخذوا باراسيتامول they didn't account for that the control group was a patient with a dry cotton pellet. Who does that? Ana ba'mil pulpotomies kul yom. We drill the access cavity, remove the coronal pulp, and replace a cotton soaked with sodium hypochlorite, not a dry cotton pellet. What's the clinical significance? How can I soak an, a cotton pellet with MTA? How much MTA do I need? And what? how much is that going to cost me? Um, what if... The MTA that I put set a little bit and creates some sort of calcification in the, in the canals that I couldn't access afterwards. Uh, sedative effect of MTA, yes. Their, their result was that the MTA group reported lower levels of pain. But why? I, I didn't read any explanation for that. Um, in conclusions, pulpotomy reduces pain from irreversible pulpitis. جد انه وي نو ذس انه بيجي المريض عنده irreversible pulpitis نعمل access cavity coronal pulpotomy بروح الوجع we've been doing this forever and honestly this is a conclusion that you came up with so another poor article unfortunately now for systematic reviews and meta analysis uh, we have a PRISMA checklist زي consort for clinical trials but now we have a PRISMA. PRISMA starts for preferred reporting items for systematic reviews and meta-analysis. Again, same concept. For each part of the uh, study, you have to make sure that you tick certain boxes. Okay? But then the medical journals have agreed on a tool to criticize the systematic reviews. The AMSTAR 16 domains. Cool domain is a question, specific question. Did the, did the research question and inclusion criteria for the review include components of PICO? You answer yes or no. For yes, you have to satisfy Hadol al Ashia. For cool question, min Hadol, you answer it with yes or no. Home 16. Hadol Home Kamleen. Those that are highlighted are considered critical domains. Home Saba. Critical domains. How to use the AMSTAR 2? Bihkilak. Your level of confidence in the results of the review is high if you have no 
or just one non-critical weakness. إذا عندك more than one critical weakness بس ما في عندك sorry more than one non-critical weakness بس ما في عندك critical weakness this is a moderate uh, confidence level إذا في عندنا one critical weakness صارت low level of confidence وإذا في عندنا more than one critical flow then it's a critically low level of confidence this is a rubbish article هاي الارتكل الثالث اللي أنا بعته uh, it's a systematic review on endocrines. It's published in Journal of Prosthetic Dentistry, a very good journal, March 2020. So uh, very fresh. When I read the article, uh, when I read the uh, title, it's of interest to me and systematic review published in a good journal. So let's see what comes out of this. Um, so the objectives, to determine whether endocrines are re reliable alternatives to post-retained restorations for extensively damaged endodontically treated teeth. Hi, awal wahde. Tanya, which preparation design is most appropriate? Which materials are best adapted? That's quite a lot for a systematic review. Uh, they reported the uh, review according to Prisma guidelines. They searched uh, PubMed, Scopus, Cochrane Library from 1995 to 2018, according to inclusion and exclusion criteria. Uh, the abstract, abstract screening and data extraction was done by two independent ex, uh, investigators, and then they identified 41 articles to include. Eight of them were clinical studies, and they were concerned with looking at survival rate, failure modes, and clinical criteria. And they had 33 in vitro studies to uh, uh, investigate the fracture resistance, stress distribution, material and preparation criteria. So the results they reported, survival rates for uh, molars, more than 90% um, over six months to 10 years. That's a typo here. Uh, six months to 10 years for both the endocrines and traditional crowns. So both of them gave survival rates of more than 90%. When premolars uh, were considered Survival for endocrines was between 68 to 75%, while it was 94 to 95% for traditional crowns. Uh, now, failure modes, which are very important, different types of failure uh, modes. The endocrines, loss, loss of retention, periodontitis and crown fracture, traditional crowns and a crown fracture, vertical root fracture, or irreversible pulpitis. This, to me, doesn't make sense. I thought they were comparing endocrines to post-retained restorations. And I don't think a post-retained restoration, one of the complications that I see irreversible pulpitis, that doesn't make sense. Uh, clinical parameters, margin adaptation, little significance uh, was observed between the crowns and endocrowns. Okay, conclusions. Endocrowns appear to be a promising alternative for restoring molars. When it comes to premolars, this requires further research, and no matter enough data. Lack of data on endocrines on incisors uh, and the varied results uh, mean that the clinical indication for restoring anterior teeth with endocrines cannot yet be stated. But in, and observed, uh, as observed in the clinical studies, successful endocrine requires good preparation design, bonding technique, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then nanocomposite and lithium disilicate seem to have adva advantages in fabrication of endocrines. They included lab-based studies. Honestly, it's a systematic reviews on survival and they included lab-based studies. That's a, that's a weakness. Uh, inclusion, exclusion criteria. Let's look at them. So studies evaluating endocrines in English, okay. Clinical and in vitro, okay, doesn't give me any information. Molar, premolar incisor, again, no information whatsoever. And the materials, what's the exclu exclusion criteria? Animal teeth, case reports, literature reviews, and no full text in English. Then non monolithic endocrines. These are not good inclusion exclusion criteria, to be honest. They don't mean anything. No mention to any risk of bias assessment. They looked at different range of studies and they didn't assess the bias whatsoever. Um, the clinical studies that they looked at, none of them was a randomized control trial. 
the conclusions, honestly, there's no objectivity in them whatsoever. Narrative. Narrative, they don't qualify for a conclusion of a systematic review. So to me, very poor quality evidence. Let's try to use the AMSTAR 2 tool uh, to, uh, to criticize this paper. So did the research question and inclusion criteria for the review include the components of PICO? Yes. Did the report of the review contain an explicit statement that the review methods were established prior to the conduct of the review? No. Did the review authors explain their selection of the study designs for inclusion of the review? No. Did the review authors use a comprehensive literature search? Yes. Did the review authors perform study selection in duplicate? Yes. Did the review authors perform data extraction in duplicate? Yes. Did the review authors provide a list of excluded studies and justify the exclusions? Yes. Did the review authors describe the included studies in adequate detail? Yes. Did the review authors use satisfactory technique for assessing the risk of bias? No. Did the review authors report on the sources of funding? No. If meta-analysis, meta-analysis wasn't done, so these two are not applicable. Did the review authors account for risk of bias when discussing the results? No. Did the review authors provide satisfactory explanation for any heterogeneity? No. If they reported quantitative synthesis, did the review authors carry out an adequate investigation of publication bias? No. واحد, did the review authors report any potential sources of conflict of interest? No. Now, uh, these domains marked with yellow arrows are the critical domains. So we have one, two, three, four critical domains that answered with no. So this is a critically low overall confidence, very low level of evidence. Now I'm quoting uh, Dr. Muhammad Rababa, the ill-informed are far more dangerous than the non-informed. ايوه كيف حالكم؟ يلا uh, مش ضايلنا كثير. So, what types of articles should I read? Um, there's a recommendation by uh, Satisfied to uh, like depend on what you want. If you're looking for uh, an update of a, a specific topic, then you go for narrative reviews, systematic reviews, or meta analysis. If you're trying to look into diagnosis, therapy, or prognosis, then you check reviews, observation studies, case reports, series, or textbooks. If you're after ideas for research, then clinical trials, experimental studies, cohort, and case, uh, case control studies. I wouldn't abide with this. I think you need to be able to read all kinds of articles, but just, this is just a rough guidance. Now, how to find an article? Look for one. Uh, we have multiple um, databases that um, contain scientific articles. We need to get familiar with them. Um, the Cochrane Library, it's a library for systematic reviews and meta analysis. PubMed is probably the uh, most famous one. And I personally use PubMed a lot. Scopus uh, is expanding and is probably the biggest. I'm not if it's bigger or not. Anyway, it's one of the most important uh, um, databases. So they classify journals into layers, level one, two, three, four. In the Jamal Urdini, for example, in order to get promoted, we have to publish in uh, level one or two, Q1, Q2, some home journals and scopus. Uh, so PubMed, um, it's a free resource. Um, of literature it contains more than 30 million citations. It does not include full text articles, but usually it gives you a link to the full text article and then into the Berhalak. Um, the PubMed is, um, is owned or maintained by the US National Library of Medicine, so it's huge. Uh, how to search PubMed? It's not uh, the purpose of this webinar because this needs a whole course of how to search PubMed. Hello, if you're a novice reader again, and you just want to look up some articles, you can easily type title, search by article, author, or journal uh, 
تايتل او ارتكل تايب هون بتدخل على الويب سايت تبع بوب ميد تكبس سيرش حط كلمه مش عارف اريجيشن ان ذا دون تك بيطلع لك ارتكلز عادي سهل هلا اف يو افتر ا سيستماتيك ريفيو انت بدك تعمل سيستماتيك ريفيو على سيرتن توبيك ذن يو نيد تو يوز ذا ميش لانجويج ميش از ميديكال سبجكت هيدنج يعني فور اكزامبل اذا بتكتب اورال كانسر بيعطيك ارتكلز مش راح مش ما راح يعطيك بس ما بيطلع لك اياهم كاملين اذا بتكتب mouth neoplasm is the medical subject heading on PubMed you'll get a more comprehensive list uh, now uh, in, in order to know the medical subject heading you need a librarian يعني انا ما بعرفهم اذا بدي اعمل systematic review I have to consult to the librarian uh, you can use the boolean logic يعني capital and capital or capital not in your search is an and it uh, limits your search يعني اذا انا بحكي مثلا paracetamol and ibuprofen رح يطلع لي الارتكلز فيها هدول الكلمتين مع بعض اذا بستعمل or it will expand the search رح يطلع لي الارتكلز اللي فيهم paracetamol او uh, ibuprofen اذا بدي not I want to exclude a certain category بحكي له paracetamol ibuprofen not um, clindamycin رح يشطب الارتكلز فيهم clindamycin for example you can use an asterisk an asterisk Uh, to uh, truncate a word, يعني إذا بتكتب ident asterisk, um, then it will go for identification, identity, or identify uh, question mark when you're not sure about the spelling. Uh, and then you can use quotation marks in order to uh, look for something as a phrase. يعني burning mouth syndrome, إذا بتحطهم between quotations, راح يطلع لك articles فيهم هدول الثلاث كلمات مع بعض rather than burning لحاله mouth لحاله syndrome لحاله. Okay, it's not the purpose of, uh, of today uh, to explain how to search it. So now how to find the full text paper. We went to PubMed, we found an article, we read the abstract, we found the full text. If you're uh, a student or uh, uh, academic staff, you should get access to most journals through your institution. Now, don't ask me the embarrassing situation. I don't know if the Jamal Urdini will give you access to articles. I'll stick to this. Um, now, uh, if you don't have access to your institution, you can join the top journals in your area of interest. And for example, عندي اشتراك مع Journal of Endodontics. Um, كل شهر بدخل بتصفحها هيك على السريع. فانت if you have a certain interest in a certain topic أو هاي شوف شو هم top journals تقدر تشترك فيهم. آخر شغلة I don't know how legal this is and I feel bad to promote it because I don't think it's a legal thing بس في ويب سايت اسمه ساي هاب ساي هايفن هاب دوت تي دبليو هذا إذا بتروح على البوب ميد وبتطلع اللينك للأرتكل تكبس عليه it will open a new tab copy the URL حطه بالساي تاب هون بيفتح لك الأرتكل most of the time ف use it while it lasts because one day it will be shut down Now, which articles are worth reading? Relevant topics. يعني أنا بدخل على Journal of Endodontics تبع شهر ال issue تبع شهر ثلاثة. I skim through it. بشوف وين ال topic اللي اللي عجبني. The article topic اللي ما عجبني من the title. I يعني I skip it. ما بقى. Sound methodology. Any article that doesn't have a good methodology is not worth reading. Or maybe worth reading just to use it as example. of a bad study أو تكون عارف لما حدا يحكي لك هذا الارتكل as evidence for something you can criticize it and say no, this is not a good evidence um, and then those articles that use conclusions and recommendations supported by the results يعني نرجع نستعمل المثال تبع أن طلاب رابعة مش أسرع طلاب بالبلد هم أسرع من سنة خامسة ما بصير تعمل conclusion كبير كتير على results تبعونك خلينا نطلع على examples of uh, famous or uh, well-known classic articles. هنا بالاندو uh, في عنا a very famous study called the Toronto study that looked into the outcome of endodontic treatment. It's uh, done by the Shimon Fredman group in Toronto. في منها phases. ضل يطلع منها حوالي I think آخر phase كانت phase 7. فبتطلعوا على الاوتكم تبع التريتمنتس تبعتهم بيحكوا لنا قديش السكسس ريت قديش السرفايفل ريت وايش البروجنوستيك فاكتورز which is good بس اذا بنطلع بسرعه على فيز 4 لسه ما لحق يخلصوا 
582 teeth treated, 137 teeth were called for uh, assessment. This gives us a recall rate of 23.5%. What does that mean? 77% of the patients did not come back. We don't know anything about them. So this is a poor study. The uh, endo treatment quality versus coronal seal. الطلاب اللي اشتغلوا معي او زملائي اللي اشتغلوا معي بيعرفوا how much I'm obsessed with the corona seal uh, issue. Now, uh, there's a very, very classic article that everyone loves to quote. It's the Ray and Trope uh, 1995 article. And they looked into the issue of which is more important the quality of the root canal treatment or the quality of the coronal seal. So um, they looked at full mouth radiographs and they uh, classified the uh, teeth to having either good root canal treatment or poor root canal treatment and good restoration and bad restoration. And then they looked at uh, the uh, percentage of apical pathology or the up percentage of absence of apical pathology. So as we all anticipate, a good endo and good coronal restoration resulted in 91% success, which is the absence of apical pathology. While a poor endo, poor restoration resulted in only 18, which, is, which makes sense. Now the good endo combined with poor coronal restoration gave a success rate of 44%. While the poor endo with good corona restoration gave a higher success of 67%. Every, everyone loves to quote this article. I think it's rubbish. Because what they did, they looked at x-rays, a snapshot in time. Whenever there's a radiolucency, they considered it as failure or whatever. You don't know whether this radiolucency is failure because maybe we did the root canal treatment and this radiolucency is shrinking you didn't follow up and follow it up in time to see whether this radiolucency is improving or getting worse. You just took a snapshot in time and determined success according to it. So very poor evidence, although it backs up what I say. Uh, Ricucci, a few years later, maybe was pissed off by the uh, Ray and Trope paper, and he came up with a, a, another paper to address the clinical significance of the so-called issue of coronal leakage. يعني هيك بيحكي عنه كأنه إشي مش محترم. For the retrospective cohort study, 55 patients with root fillings that had been exposed to the oral environment because of caries absent restoration. As we saw here on the upper right four, lower left six or seven, مش عارف. ما في coronal restoration بالمرة بس في good root canal filling. Uh, they, they did radiographic evaluation. Data suggests that the problem of coronal leakage may not be of such a great clinical importance as implicated by numerous studies in vitro, provided instrumentation and root fillings are carefully performed. How would be right you and the coronal leakage had a hakifadi? As long as the endo treatment is good, you don't have a problem. طبعاً في كتير ناس عنا على الفيسبوك. من الابطال الفيسبوك عندهم هذا الكونسيبت انه بس الاندو هي المهمه، اي شيء ثاني ما بهم. خلينا نشوف هنا اتس ا سيستماتيك ريفيو ميتا اناليسيس لوكينج انتو ذا سيم سبجكت اند ذيس واز ببلشت ان 2011. ويزاوت جوينج انتو تو ماتش ديتيل اون ذا بيزس اوف ذا كارنت افيلبل ايفيدنس ذا اودز فور هيلينج اوف ايبيكال بيردونتاس انكريسز وذ بوث اديكويت روت فيلينج اند اديكويت ريستوريتيف ريستوريشن. اوكي. Although poorer clinical outcomes may be expected with adequate filling, inadequate restoration, and inadequate filling, adequate restoration, there is no significant difference in the odds of healing between the two. Again, because it's a systematic review that looked into randomized control trials, they couldn't find good evidence. So what does that mean? What I think. I think in the corona restoration is more important because the outcome تبعهم كان the presence or absence of apical pathology. That's not the only outcome I'm interested in. You can look here. If I leave this tooth without a good seal, not only will I get apical radiolucency, this tooth will be non-restorable. And this is what happens when you leave caries and do your root canal and wait for some time for the prosthodontist to do the crown. 
you're losing the tooth because it became non-restorable. You may have a tooth without apicaridinescency, but it's non-restorable anymore. So that doesn't make any sense to me. I wouldn't take this piece of information and adopt it in my clinical practice. Uh, another issue is a single versus multiple treatments. This is a Cochrane review published in 2016, fairly recent. Without going into too much detail, there is no evidence to suggest that one treatment regimen is better than the other. Now, every single endodontist, like most endodontists, but every single endodontist, and I, I'm, I'm not one of these most endodontists, who would try to provide evidence that single visit root canal treatment is as successful as multiple visits because it's easier for us. Come on, we do the root canal treatment, one visit, patient gone, we take our money, everyone's happy. So um, this, this is a Cochrane review, the highest level of evidence, and it's telling you that there's no evidence. They didn't say that there is evidence that they are the same. They said there's no evidence that one of them is better than the other. That's the difference. Hala. My opinion, uh, the outcome of root canal treatment, as I said, depends on multiple factors. We, it's not like someone ando, hala, wahad ando corona. Now, a randomized control trial. Wahad marid nati, one group of patients nati hum chloroquine noon. Hada mushaf shu tabal malaria. Ul group tani nati hum placebo. Baden min shu the percentage of nasal litabu. فهاي سهلة مريض عنده certain issue تعطي intervention اللي هو one type of drug versus drug B وبتشوف which one of them was more successful uh, uh, dentistry is not like this success and failure in dentistry depends on so many factors so it's difficult to isolate one factor and study it the inclusion exclusion criteria in the Cochrane reviews would probably disregard some uh, clinical studies that would be useful because they are strict about uh, clinical trials, randomized clinical trials. And then this conclusion, as I said, I wouldn't take it into my practice. Let's, let's quickly think about clinicians who perform root canal treatments in those outcome studies. They, there's a wide range, they range between postgraduate students to specialists to consultants. And then, uh, the type of patients or the diagnosis ranges from irreversible pulpitis with normal apical issues to long-standing infection with sinus tract or acute apical abscess. Now, you're telling me that overall, there's no difference. Multiple visit treatment is as successful as single visit. Right. Let's think together. Hala is a the and a postgraduate students or specialists or consultants doing root canals. Who among these is more likely to do the root canal in single visit? It's the consultants and specialists because they're more experienced. Yet you're telling me that the postgraduate students are achieving the same success rate. Maybe because of multiple uh, visit uh, technique is a better technique, maybe. When you have a patient with irreversible pulpitis with normal apical tissues, you most of the time finish the treatment single visit. There's no point of doing it in multiple visit. While if you have a, a case with an acute apical abscess um, or a sinus tract, long-standing infection, you are tempted sometimes to wait uh, to see some sort of improvement before you operate. Yet you're telling me with the difficult cases, long-standing infection, as those that are irreversibly inflamed in normal apical tissues, maybe because multiple uh, visit technique is a better one, Maybe. I'm just giving you something to think about. I'm not saying that. Don't quote me on it. Right. Um, how to stay up to date with the literature? You need to follow the most relevant journals in your specialty. And I follow Journal of Endodontics, International Endodontic Journal regularly. And then whatever comes my, comes my way. Uh, you need to join journal clubs. Journal clubs, yeah, it's a bit laggy nas group. They are kind of next in interest. Have been it alamu, and you uh, hold regular meetings once every week, once every month. It doesn't matter. You read, you, you you decide on certain articles that you want to read. You read them at home, and then you sit together and you discuss them and you criticize them. A, a it gives you the motivation to read, and you can always benefit from other people's opinions. Uh, if you're a postgraduate student, this is done 
uh, by default by your course. But if you're not, then try to pick this habit. Um, attend scientific conferences, and I underline scientific. And I could send a British Endodontic Society meeting in London. And I hardly run into any Jordanians. I don't see anyone in Jordan. But when I see the conference in Dubai, there is a hijra of all the doctors who are in Dubai. Because there is hardly any science in it. Uh, it's, it's merely an exhibition. People go there uh, to chat and buy new stuff. No one goes to attend a lecture. And probably the level of lectures is questionable. I'm not just saying this uh, about Dubai. حتى اللي بيجي على مؤتمر المقابي ومؤتمر الجامعة اللي بيجي بس على حفل الافتتاح بتصور وبروح. Don't kid yourself. You're not attending a conference. You need to see how to find those conferences that have science in them and attend them if you want to stay up to date. مش بس تروح على محل هلا في الموضة الأطباء الأسنان بكون عنده بالعيادة حيط كامل كله شهادات. شهادات هي conferences يعني. They don't mean anything. Don't kid yourself. Um, another way of staying up to date is to follow those prominent names on ResearchGate. And uh, I personally do follow a few people. Whenever they publish something, I get notified through ResearchGate and I go ahead and read the, their articles. So that's a good way. Uh, account at ResearchGate, يعمل واحد, will start following people. Uh, CPD courses are good. But you need to know uh, who's giving those CPD courses. And I encourage you to question the credentials of whoever is giving the course. Yani the fact that someone is famous on Facebook or and a million like or Instagram, that doesn't mean that this person is credible. You need people who are in a position to give you courses. Uh, I know that this uh, won't find any uh, ears. Uh, Yani among a lot of you, but uh, I have to say it. Yani. And then finally, uh, follow international clinical guidelines. As I said, and to me, uh, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence in England, American Society of Endodontology, for example, uh, or, sorry, European Society of Endodontology, or American Association of Endodontics, had all to me, they're big bodies. I follow their guidelines and I keep myself up to date with them. What to avoid? Social media dentistry, yani, um, I had a few cases that I wanted to share with you. Um, in screenshots, and I'm in على Facebook. I wanted to show you the level of disaster uh, that's uh, practiced and bragged about. But then I decided I don't want to uh, start this um, yani, argument. Ma bdi hada yakhudha personal. But bdi ahki kum ano. If you do post your stuff on social media. ما تزعلوا مني if I use them in my lectures and criticize them because you already posted them on social media. Don't just expect likes. Uh, you should accept criticism as well. Uh, if you want to post something on social media, لازم تكونوا قدها. Case reports and case series. These are not good sources of information. If I try a new technique or a new intervention a hundred times and I fail 99 times, but by luck I succeed one time, and I go ahead and publish it as a case report, that doesn't mean anything. It means that I failed and failed and failed, and then one of my treatments worked. And this is what happens on Facebook, really. They're all case reports. We don't know what happens in reality. We just know this one good case that's posted there. Uh, whatever you do, don't ever think that you know it all. No matter how good you are, no matter how qualified or what degrees you achieve, if you think, okay, خلاص, أنا صرت أعرف كل إشي, uh, then the ship is going to sail and you'll be, leave, you'll be left behind. فا, uh, أنا كل articles, أو most of the articles that I discussed today, uh, they've been published after I finished my clinical training and my PhD. And I did this for a reason. And I want to show you that you need to keep reading even after you finish your uh, education or clinical training. How can I practice evidence-based dentistry? So you need to recognize the need for information and come up with an answerable question. And then try to find evidence for that question. You go down the hierarchy from meta-analysis, systematic reviews, and then clinical trials, and you keep going down if you don't find any. Evaluate the evidence. Hey, Shufnakif, a systematic review that's published in uh, 
one of the top journals, but was rubbish. Uh, integrate that evidence with your clinical expertise and patients' needs, and then reflect on what you do and make any necessary changes. If you do this, then you are adopting evidence-based dentistry in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, so last thing, what to take home. Uh, I hope that I gave something useful. Uh, I hope uh, I gave some useful information. Akid al hadaf minha is not to teach you how to write a manuscript or to teach you critical appraisal. You need to work hard to get to that level. But what I expect, the minimum I expect, is that if there is a person who 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 is يعني كيف هذول الدراسات يعني خلينا نتخيلهم مع بعض انه اجوا ناس حملوا تو جروبس اوف ومن واحده منهم عربيه واحده منهم اجنبيه واعطوهم فوم يعبوا احكوا له انت قديش بتهتمي حالك تهتمي بجمالك من صفر لعشرة فطلع الافرج تبع الجروب تبع المراه العربيه اعلى من الافرج تبع الجروب المراه الاجنبيه وعملوا ستاتستيكال اناليسيس طلع في سيجنيفيكنت ديفرنس فراحوا نشروها بمجلة ليفينج ويل أو مش عارف إيش فطلع عنا إيفيدنس إنه المرأة العربية تهتم بجمالها أكثر. Uh, what I expect from each and every one of you is to stop and say no, thank you, we don't accept this. Uh, مش علينا إحنا we are educated people and we know uh, شو الدراسات. أنا بس أسمع حدا بيحكي أثبتت الدراسات يعني I assume 99% that what they're saying is bullshit. Tell me what these studies are. Last thing, I want to thank everyone for watching. Uh, I want to thank Jads for the opportunity to speak in front of you. And uh, most importantly, Ruba Jamal Sar and Nazar for organizing this webinar. Uh, I'll try to take any questions now. I'll try to see if I can answer them. Uh, shukran. أم ما بعرف أم كيف بدنا ناخذ الاسئله اذا حدا عنده اسئله بحب يكتب هلا I'm happy to answer راح استنى a few minutes وبعدين thank you سارة الناظر thank you thank you guys دكتوره ميسون معانا thank you دكتوره ميسون والله I'm uh, يعني I'm privileged أحمد عبد السلام أهلا وسهلا طيب إذا ما في أسئلة يعني بتمنى إني أكون حكيت إشي مفيد لبعض منكم هي تغيير شوي عن صور الفينيرز وصور الإكس رايز تبعون الأندو يعني بتمنى انه لو 10% of those who watched يكونوا استفادوا واخذوا شيء to adopt in their clinical practice uh, بعتبر حالي عملت شيء مفيد uh, بتمنى لكم كلكم uh, يعني كارنتين موفق و, uh, و, وظلوا بالبيت اقعدوا بالدار uh, وان شاء الله الله بيعدي الازمه على خير ونرجع لحياتنا الطبيعية very soon ونشوفكم كلكم أنا راح أستنى كمان دقيقتين في question سارة بتحكي لي I just want to ask how can we know if the authors and journals طيب خلينا نشوف محمد لقهيوي how can we know if the authors and journals are good or not uh, Journals, Muhammad, the uh, website is Mosai Mago. You can look it up. Uh, you type the journal and classification according to Scopus. If it's Q1, Q2, 
it's generally a good uh, journal. If it's uh, three, four, then level a girl's way. If you cannot find it on SciMago, then it's a joke of a journal. Uh, how can you know the uh, authors are good? Maba, this is something that uh, you develop with experience. بتصير تعرف أنت لما تقرأ إنه هذا ال 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 author بنقرأ له هذا ال author ما بنقرأ له. Okay. When's the next video webinar? صار لي أسبوع بشتغل على هذا الفيديو ويبينار ف ريم غزاوي my next video webinar is gonna be next quarantine بعيد الشر راح يكون مطول لأنه بتعب ما تفكري إنه سهلة روان أبو عبود عندك سؤال تفضلي Should we go in a sequence to read the articles or can we go uh, on from meta to systematic and so on? Um, I'm not sure if I understood your question. Liz. Um, meta analysis systematic reviews are summaries with some critical appraisal of multiple articles together. Um, so, يعني, ما بعرف إذا أنا فاهم بالضبط. Um, sometimes you cannot find meta analysis systematic reviews on a certain topic, so you have to accept the evidence that's there. Uh, and uh, the the um, the idea behind criticizing those articles, مش عشان أفرجي إنه I'm a picky person وأنا بنتقد هدول articles. بس إحنا نعرف إنه كل يعني لما يجي واحد يحكي لي هاي ال evidence أنا بعمل هيك عشان هاي ال evidence تبعه. طيب أوكي أنت بس قرأت ال title وعم تحكي لي هذا ك evidence ولا أنت you know exactly what's been done. Um, ف... يعني, ah, you can, I'm not saying dismiss articles of a lower level of evidence. They are still important. Uh, فقار, صديقي, uh, my gym partner. Uh, how possible is it to come up with a study that satisfies the critical criteria, especially for GPs like us? Uh, يعني, again, I'm not sure I need a coffee. هلا. مش كثير عم بفهم الأسئلة. If you think, if, if your question is how can you come up with a perfect study, I'm afraid that it's very difficult. يعني إحنا ما بتذكر آخر مرة قرأت article كان perfect. Uh, دائما لازم يكون في شغلة لأنه people have different opinions. Uh, ف if I, if I'm designing a clinical study and I'm doing one now, I'm doing one on endocrine and I'm going to try to publish it. When I publish it, I don't claim that it's the perfect study. I know that there are limitations. And it's my duty to discuss those limitations in the discussion. But we don't live in an ideal world, so you don't have an ideal study. Uh, I hope I answered your question. Um, I think this is enough. You had a turning. Thank you, Dr. Murad Chakman. Dr. Murad, you are a teacher. Okay. Is a hack a new comment? Dr. Muhammad Lighewi, but then you are with us. If I found a famous author publishing in a bad journal, would I suspect this author, like the head of Endo Department? It's not suspicion. It's not suspicion, Muhammad. إحنا ما إحنا ما عم نطعن في شخصيات الناس. إحنا we critically appraise the paper. Uh, a good author who published in a bad journal would raise questions. Why this author is publishing in this journal? أنا في عندي paper عم بحاول أنشرها. It's been rejected eight times. I try, I started with the highest level of journals and I kept going down the order. I'm desperate to get it published. When you see it published in a journal that's not amazing, it's not because I chose this uh, this journal. It's probably I was rejected. I, the fact I was rejected from the top journals, I went down the pecking order. So uh, it's not a matter of suspicion. Okay. طيب شكرا لكم جميعا أه بتمنى لكم السلامة والصحة والله يديم عليكم الصحة وعلى أهليكم وإن شاء الله نلتقي فيكم قريبا 
تصبحوا على خير وشكرا سامحوني اذا طولت عليكم